Okay, folks, welcome back. Here's a little update on the uh, beacon key click situation and a little bit on the uh, phase noise of this beacon in its current configuration as well. The uh, beacon is over here uh, running um, on the bench beside me. And I'm going to make this introduction uh, uncharacteristically short for me. You don't need to uh, watch me sit here and uh, talk all day. So let's get right into this and I'll show you uh, what I'm doing with the key click filter and the results with and without that. And also a little update on what the uh, phase noise situation is with this beacon in the current configuration. Okay, so the beacon is running here on the bench. And here's what I'm doing with the uh, key click uh, filter circuit. I showed you the resistor in the last video. There's a 20 ohm resistor down in here in the series with the uh, keyed voltage going to the last two amplifier stages here in the uh, multiplier unit. And I've got this uh, 330 microfarad capacitor, which right now is not in circuit. It's disconnected here on one side. We'll put it in for the next test. And I experimented with different values and I think 330 microfarads is somewhere around about right. I might go up or down a little on that in the final uh, final version. So let me just put the cover on here to minimize some of the uh, leakage out of this unit. We're actually radiating the signal from this uh, little antenna over here primarily. So we'll go over into the shack and uh, listen to this. And so there's the uh, beacon signal on frequency. There's some leakage, but there's the uh, there's the keying. If we go down about one kilohertz, you see there's still some very strong key clicks. You might have heard the single click there on make when it started the 10 second carrier. You'll hear one on break here in a second, or a few seconds. There's the key click on break. So it's clicking. Um, it's clicking both on key down and key up, or make and break uh, on this. We'll listen to that again. Here's the uh, key clicks at one kilohertz off frequency. That single one was when it went key down on the 10 seconds of carrier. And we'll wait for the 10 seconds to expire here. And that single one was when it went key click, key up on the uh, carrier, or the end of the carrier. So if we go down a little further, you know, three or four or five kilohertz, uh, they're still very, very evident. We get down about 10 kilohertz, uh, they're really not so much uh, anymore. So at 10 kilohertz off, I I can still hear some clicks, but they're not really moving the meter. So they may not be as bad as I first thought they were. You know, given the on frequency signal is 20 dB over S9 on this meter. But still, you'll see a big difference when I uh, put that capacitor in circuit uh, for the next uh, test here. Uh, you'll, you won't be hearing these. Um, you know, there's the 20 over 9 signal on frequency. And there's the uh, key clicks at uh, you know S7 to S8, uh, one kilohertz off. But you won't be hearing that um, when I put the key click filter in circuit. Okay, so here we are in the shack listening to the uh, beacon signal with the uh, capacitor in. So we've got key click filtering. The beacon on frequency signal is about. Uh, 19 dB over S9 on this meter. Well, there's a little bit of fluctuation. It looks closer to 20 there, but it's averaging around uh, plus 19 or so. Um, so now if we go one kilohertz down in uh, in frequency from there, let's see, that was at 1.94. So we go down to uh, 0.94 and I'll turn up the gain here just a, a little bit. Hopefully this doesn't get too loud for you. Okay. 
So you can hear some keying there. What you're hearing is phase noise. You really don't hear a, a click uh, at the beginning or end of each uh, Morse element anymore. You do hear some phase noise. We're only one kilohertz uh, off frequency here. And I'll talk about how far down this phase noise is from the uh, from the fundamental here in a little bit. So if we go down 10 kilohertz, um, let's see, uh, basically 301, so uh, 291 ish. So we get down about 10 kilohertz. And I can hear, still hear some phase noise with the keying, but just barely. It's just barely audible there at uh, 10 kilohertz down. Now if we go back up to the um, to 1 kilohertz down, and there are some spurs because of the way I'm running that beacon right now, but if we go back to uh, 1 kilohertz below, That phase noise is clearly audible, but it's S0 on the meter. It's not, not moving the meter at all. So, um, that's actually better than I was expecting on this setup, and uh, something I can live with. And we will go into, uh, I'll show you uh, how I calibrated this S meter, or checked the calibration on this S meter here in the, uh, in the next segment. But there's some notes I took just on these, uh, on these readings here. And we write back with the uh, signal generator tests on looking at what these S meter readings uh, correlate to in terms of uh, dB down from the fundamental on the phase noise here. Okay, so let's take a look at this S meter calibration. And this is not an exact, uh, an exact measurement. This is uh, a fairly close approximation. Uh, there are some uh, some variables in this in that the uh, receiver S meter on that phase noise uh, at one kilohertz off frequency was uh, not moving at all. It was S zero, and of course, there's a few dB um, range that you know that S zero would represent. So this is a, this is a fairly good approximation. I'd say it's within uh, oh probably two or three dB, but it's close enough for uh, what I want to do right now. So. And I apologize for a little bit of uh, clutter around here. If I cleaned everything up every time I want to make a video, I'd never make a video. So uh, I guess uh, you all get to deal with, uh, with this place looking the way it normally does. Uh, so here I've got some attenuation in here, 12 dB of attenuation, because I needed to get this down to a level for the weaker reading below what the uh, signal generator can do. So these are not exact numbers. Uh, you know, uh, minus 74 dBm doesn't represent what the S meter over there says, um, but it's the relative uh, readings, the difference between these three measurements I'm going to show you that we care about. So we're at minus 74 dBm, and over on the receiver, that gives me a reading. I hope that audio is not too loud for you folks. It might be. It's turned down as far as it will go anymore, and the receiver is off, or the audio level is off. So that's about plus 19 on the meter. That's right about uh, where the beacon was for its on frequency signal. Now let's come back over here and I've already done these tests so I know what numbers to set this to. So I'm going to take this down to minus 121 dBm. Uh, right there. If I went up one more dB the S meter would not be on zero anymore so that's uh, that's right where we hit zero. The S meter is on zero, and as you can probably tell, the uh, signal is plainly audible, like the phase noise was at uh, one kilohertz off frequency. Now if we come back over here again and uh, set the level of this to minus 133 dBm, and come over here, now we've got a barely audible signal about like the phase noise was at 10 kilohertz off frequency. So by this admittedly crude uh, measurement, what we get is that the beacon phase noise 
at one kilohertz soft frequency is about 47 dB down from its uh, carrier and at 10 kilohertz off it's about uh, 59 dB down you know plus or minus uh, 2 or 3 dB or whatever the measurement uh, uncertainties are here but that's better than I expected and I'm prepared to live with uh, with uh, you know 59 dB down 50 say 55 plus uh, at uh, 10 kilohertz soft frequency and uh, you know uh, more than 45 at uh, 1 kilohertz off and if you go further off I'm sure it gets even weaker right now I don't have the signal level to really uh, demonstrate that but um, I'm certainly prepared to live with uh, those levels hey it's me again I just wanted to add a couple of uh, notes that I should have explained better uh, in those last couple of segments uh, first of all, these phase noise measurements or estimates are rather preliminary. The 10 megahertz reference I'm using for this right now to uh, lock it to a GPS for the uh, frequency accuracy is my Trimble Thunderbolt, which is my main uh, GPS DO uh, here in the lab and the uh, shack. Uh, that will not be the case in the Beacon final implementation. I'll probably be using a Leo Bodner unit. So the quality of the 10 megahertz reference might affect the uh, final phase noise. So when we get to that point, I will certainly do an update video and uh, see if I can uh, do some more precise measurements on what the beacon's final uh, phase noise is. Also, you may have noticed some spurs there of the beacon signal, some extra, uh, you know, T9 notes uh, or carriers, if you will, as I was tuning up and down the band. That is probably because I am using an exactly 10 megahertz uh, reference, which is all the uh, Trimble Thunderbolt can really do. Uh, and I have the um, I have the uh, DigiLO Beacon Exciter, our signal source, uh, set to produce a, a frequency of uh, 10,368.310 megahertz, and that puts it into uh, I believe fractional n uh, mode and it's not, you know, working straight with the integer uh, integer divisor ratios. So it's um. There are a few spurs that way. I discussed in an earlier video that one way to clean that up is to uh, raise the frequency of the 10 megahertz reference by 299 hertz, and then um, use exactly 1152 megahertz uh, on the uh, digi LO. And then you eliminate all those uh, spurs. Uh, you're in integer uh, uh, divisor uh, mode at that point. Uh, so those spurs will likely go away um, in the uh, final implementation as well, and more to come on that. But this is just a preliminary update. Mainly I wanted to show the, uh, the results of the uh, key click filtering, but I thought I'd throw in a little bit about phase noise uh, while I was doing it too in the current uh, implementation. Okay, so that's it for today. Thanks again, and uh, see you next time.